I'm Bob Duhamel, and today I'm going to talk about open circuits. Now it seems like a pretty straightforward thing. Let's look at a closed circuit to begin with. Here's a battery. Let's put three resistors in series with that battery. Just to make the numbers easy, let's make this 40 volts. Make this 20 ohms. Make this 15 ohms. And make this 5 ohms. And let's just take a look at the voltages across this circuit for a moment. First of all, how much resistance do I have in the whole circuit? Well, I have my series resistors, they're all in series, and we just simply add those together. So 20 plus 15 plus 5 is a total of 40 ohms. Makes a nice easy number. If we want to know our current, we simply divide into our voltage. 40 goes into 40 one time, and we have 1 amp of current. Okay, with that 1 amp of current across 20 volts, across 20 ohms, of course we're going to have, let's do that in green just to help us see what we're doing, there's going to be 20 volts. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let's do that in red because I don't think that shows up too well on the camera. Let's make that 20 volts. And over here, you can do the ohms law in your head if you want to, 1 amp, 15 ohms, oh, multiply them together, that's going to be 15 volts. And last but not least, we have the 5 ohm resistor. 1 amp times 5 ohms is going to give us a total of 5 volts. And we can see that this follows Kirchhoff's voltage law, where we start with 40 volts, we lose 20, we lose 15, we lose 5, so we lose all 40 volts around the circuit. So the total voltage across these components equals the source voltage. Everything adds up. Let's put a voltmeter here and just look at the voltages around the circuit for a moment. So there's our black lead down at the lowest possible voltage. Now we measure our voltages with our red lead and we're going to have plus 40 volts here. Over here we're going to start with 40, we're going to lose 20, so we have plus 20 volts left over. Over here we have, we start with 20, we lose 15, so we have plus 5 volts here. And now we have plus 5, we lose that plus 5, and we have 0 volts left here. Now I'm going to replace these with green because I think this is going to get confusing if I use the same color for voltage and the two different voltages. So let's go ahead and we could, just hope you can see this, 20 volts, 15 volts, and 5 volts. Okay, now let's see what happens if something happens and the circuit breaks right there. So now I have a broken circuit. How much current do I have flowing in the circuit now? I don't longer have a complete path. So therefore I have zero amps flowing. Now what happens to everything else around the circuit? Well here's where I've seen some people run into a bit of a problem. Some people with enough experience that should know better. But in electronic school it's pounded into our head so much that if you have a resistor Let's get rid of this for now. Here's a resistor somewhere in space. And what do we have across that resistor? We have a voltage drop. That's a buildup of voltage across the resistor. So we have some voltage called a voltage drop across that resistor, don't we? To have that voltage drop or to have that voltage across that resistor, we need two things. We need resistance plus we need current. And so if we have a certain amount of current flowing through this resistor, we're going to have a higher voltage where the current enters and a lower voltage where it exits. And if we know what that resistor is, and we know what this current is, let's say it's 1 amp and 5 ohms, well, Ohm's law says 1 times 5 gives us a total of 5 volts across that resistor, and it's going to be higher where the conventional current goes in, lower where it goes out. So we know that we have positive to negative voltage there, higher here, lower there, and the difference is 5 volts. But if I take this current away, now we have resistance, but we don't have current. So we can no longer have that voltage. So let's start with our circuit again. And we'll 
leave that gap in there, there's no current. So what's the difference between the voltage here and the voltage here? Let's label our battery. There's our positive side. It's a 40 volt battery. Let's put our meter here, just make sure we know what we're doing. So I'm going to see at this point plus 40 volts because there's a 40 volt difference across the battery. Higher voltage at the positive, lower voltage at the negative. Got the black lead at the negative side. So I'm going to read positive 40 on my meter. What voltage am I going to read here? Well, some people get in their heads, there must be a voltage drop. There must be because there's a resistor, but there's no current. Therefore, no current, no voltage difference. The voltage here cannot be different from the voltage here. So whatever voltage I have here, I also have here. So now my red lead is going to measure 40 volts right there. What about here? Well, I'm connected to the battery, got two resistors. Don't really care what those resistors are because I know that with no current, I can have no voltage drop. So I'll have 40 volts there. What if I move my meter down to here? Well, now I've moved across the gap. Now I'm basically connected to the bottom. There can be no difference in the voltage here. There's no current flowing through this. So this voltage cannot be higher than that. If this is zero volts and there can be no difference in the voltage across this resistor, this must also be zero volts. So I see that I've got my entire 40 volts across that gap. Now, as soon as I fix that gap, everything goes back the way it was. 40 volts, 20 volts, five volts, assuming that these resistors are 20 ohms and 15 ohms and five ohms, we're back to what we saw before. But as soon as we open the circuit, we're back to this. No voltage drop. All of my voltage is dropped across here. So that is the basics of an open circuit. We can use this for some troubleshooting. Let's say, get rid of our voltages here. I'll leave that one there because that one's not going to change. And let's say we can't see that gap, but we take our meter here and we look, okay, plus 40. Uh-oh. I still have, I have 40 volts here and there. What's that tell me? Either this is short circuited and there's no resistance. Remember to get the voltage difference, we must have resistance and current. So either I have no resistance, meaning this is a dead short, or I have no current. Now let's take our meter and look here. Ah, there's a clue. Because I have all of my voltage here and none of my voltage there which means that it looks to me like I have an infinite resistance here. So what that's telling me is that resistor is probably open. So I have no current, so I have no change in voltage from here to here, from there to there, and I have all of my voltage from there to there, therefore that is probably an open resistor. So a little bit of a troubleshooting tip there of how you can find a burned out component by checking the voltages. You'll have all your voltage across the burned out component or the open component. So that's the basics of an open circuit. Now, if we looked at it this way, let's say we saw our 40 volts here and zero volts here. Well, it looks to me like that's the one that's burned open there or somewhere along the line. Now, originally we had like an opening right there where ah, 40 volts, zero volts. That told us that the gap was before the resistor, but if we, well, let's say we're looking on the circuit and we see, oh, 40 volts, zero volts, 40 volts, zero volts. Ah, I must have a break there, even though I can't see it. You look at the circuit board with a magnifier. Oh, look, a little crack in the circuit board. That's how you could find a crack in the circuit board. Go looking at your voltage and say, oh, battery voltage, zero volts. Look very close. Oh, look, a bad solder joint or a crack in the circuit board or a broken wire, who knows what, that is actually there. If we have this situation, again, 40 volts, zero volts, 40 volts, zero volts, 40 volts, zero volts. Oh, there must be an open there. That's going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 40. Oh, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 0. The crack must be right there. Look, and there it is. That's how you can find a crack in the circuit board is by measuring along and seeing where that sudden jump in voltage. What I mean by that is you have a circuit board, 
Here's a trace on the circuit board. And you're measuring with your meter, 40 volts, 40 volts, 40 volts, zero volts. Ah, that means your crack is right where you have the sudden voltage change. So a little troubleshooting technique there. So that's what we need to know about open circuits is when we have an open circuit, there's no current flow. Therefore, we have no voltage drop across our resistors. And so here we are connected to the negative side of the battery with no current. So there can be no difference in voltage. So this voltage is the same as that voltage. So I see zero on both sides. I'll draw the break in the circuit there. 40 volts here. I see the battery voltage here. I see the battery voltage there. Either that's a short circuit or I have no current. Come down here. I still see 40 volts. Well, either they're... One of them is shorted and I have no current, but then I find, ah, 40 volts here, zero volts there. That tells me that I've actually got a break at that point there. Now, let's say that I did have a short circuit here instead of an open circuit somewhere else. What would that do to me? Well, the difference would be that I would have higher voltages. If this was a short circuit there, let's look at the actual voltages we'll get just so we know the difference. So I start over here with 40 volts, 40 volts there. That means either this is a short circuit or I have no current. Then I look down here and I see 10 volts. Ah, well, that would make sense. Let's put this here again. Yeah, that adds up 40 volts and 20 ohms. That would give me about 2 amps of current. So 20 ohms, 40 volts, about 2 amps of current, and I would have Okay, 2 amps plus 5 ohms gives me 10 volts. Yeah, okay. And then I have 2 amps and 15 ohms. That's going to be 30 volts. And that's going to add up. So 40 minus 30 leaves 10. And so we see there, that's what would happen if we actually had a short instead of an open. But we're mainly looking at open circuits here. So there's your troubleshooting technique. If you see something like that, you've got a short. But if you see 40 volts, 40 volts, 40 volts, 0 volts, then you have and open. And that's basically what we need to know about open circuits. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.